You may have seen pictures of your liver. Basically looks a little bit like this. And your liver, as the project manager, determines what and how waste comes out of your body. And your liver, as your project manager, also has jurisdiction over everything that comes into the body. So let's first of all look at food. Never in the history of mankind have human beings eaten so many carbohydrates. What are carbohydrates? Let's make an assessment here. Carbohydrates. What would most Australians have started the day with? We know because there's a whole aisle devoted to it. Cereal. Cereal is Aussie's favourite breakfast and sometimes toast. You can buy bread in every corner shop. It's a very abundant food. And because cereal and bread doesn't take you far, mid-morning many are going to the cakes, the biscuits, maybe a pie. Australians love their pies. And Europeans have introduced Australians to pizza, another fast food, and pasta, the very popular pasta. I'm a fifth generation Australian with Scottish descent. I didn't know what pasta was till I was about 18. I don't think there's an Australian today that doesn't know what pasta is. Popular food. Rice. Asians have introduced Australians to rice, potatoes. My husband's an Irishman, he loves potatoes. And then last and certainly least in nutritive value is the pure crystallised acid that was extracted from the sugarcane field. Would you agree with me? Australians are high carbohydrate consumers. This morning I talked about the gastrointestinal tract. I talked about how it's a hollow tube and anything that goes into that hollow tube is not part of you or me until it gets broken down to tiny substances and then absorbed into the blood. Well, it is the liver that determines where that tiny substance goes. It is glucose. All of these foods break down in the gastrointestinal tract to glucose. Once glucose gets into the blood, it goes on the M1 main highway straight to project manager. It's called the portal vein. And then the project manager, your liver, determines where that glucose goes. The first place it will send glucose is to the cell. Let's have a look. Here is cell. Glucose gets sent into the cell. When it goes into the cell, it goes through a 20-step pathway. And that 20-step pathway gives us two units of energy. And I think we all realise that that's what glucose is for, for energy. The end result of that 20-step pathway is a chemical form of glucose called pyruvate. Pyruvate is the chemical form of glucose that gets fed into the powerhouse, called the powerhouse because this eight-step pathway delivers to us a whopping 36 units of the big E energy. Whoa, what a difference. And why the difference? The difference is oxygen. This pathway uses oxygen. This pathway does not use oxygen. For the technical amongst us, this is the glycolytic pathway. This is the mitochondria, specifically the Krebs cycle. What a difference oxygen makes. By the way, how are you going to feel if every single one of your 100 trillion cells has got enough oxygen coming in so that it can get down to there? You're going to feel good. We're not going to be able to hold you down. But we're not going to look at oxygen today. We're going to look at oxygen tomorrow. Right now, we're looking at the fate of glucose. So number one, the first place that the liver will send this glucose is to the cell to be burnt as fuel. But on a high carbohydrate diet, there is still a lot of glucose left over. And so now, this is specifically the muscle cell, it stores this glucose 
like a little bunch of grapes. They're little molecules of glucose and they're called glycogen. Glycogen is a name given to quick release glucose stores. That is what our body uses on our morning walk. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning, I have a few glasses of water and then I go for my morning walk. Do you ever wonder where you get the energy to do your morning walk when all you've had is water? It is your glycogen stores, specifically in your muscle cell. And those glycogen stores in your muscle cell, it's like they're in a prison. They can only be used by your muscle cell. But the liver can store glycogen too. And the glycogen stored in the liver can be used all over the body. So it can be a fantastic reserve supply for your brain. But on a high carbohydrate diet, releasing a lot of glucose, we still have glucose left over. Even when it's been th fed through the energy cycle, even when it's been stored as glycogen, and only so much glycogen can be stored, now the body, specifically the liver, sends it over to the most amazing fuel depot in the human body. It's called fat. And in many Aussies today, the glucose keeps coming and the body, as we talked about earlier, gets into a habit and shunt, shunt, shunt. The glucose gets into the habit of all just going over to the fat cells. And what's happening to most Aussies today? They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Did you know that we've overtaken America? 63% of Australians are today overweight or obese. So this is the third place that the liver sends the glucose to be stored as fat. This is a fact many do not realize. It was only about oh, six months ago, Time Magazine, front page of Time Magazine, it said, butter, why we were wrong on the fat. And a recent Catalyst show said its title was Fat or Fiction. It is starting to be acknowledged what I'm showing you today, that fat's not the problem. The problem is this high carbohydrate diet that many Aussies are consuming is being stored as copious amounts of fat. And often when people want to lose weight, they stop the fat. But the fat's not the problem. The problem is this high carbohydrate diet, forcing the body to store the excess as fat stores. And so what happens now is the person's getting big. And it could be like a man I met about a year ago who told me that he went to his doctor and his doctor said, you're overweight, your blood pressure's too high, your cholesterol levels are too high, your blood pressure's going too high, you're going to have to go on some medication. He said, just, just, let, me, um, just let me see what I can do first. And the doctor said, okay, I'll suggest you stop all fat in your diet. He went home, he was only having a little bit of fat, he stopped the fat, and when the fat stops, the person gets hungry and so they eat a lot of carbohydrate. That's what usually happens because that's one of the roles of fat in digestion is to give the feeling of satiation or satisfaction. He said three months later he went back to the doctor, he'd lost one kilo. What does that mean when you're 150 kilos? Not much. <laughs> doctor said, no, 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 we're going to have to put you on medication. Lee said, nah, give me, give me another try. He said, I'm a business analyst, and if something doesn't work, you don't keep doing it. He said, so I went home and did a Google search. I came up with the paleo diet. I came up with the gap diet. I came up with grain brain. I came up with bodybuilding.com. He said, I came up with the FODMAT diet. I came up with Atkins diet. And he said, what got me about all of these authors, 
majority of them doctors, with many years of clinical practice up their sleeve. They're all saying the same thing. And what does the proverb say? In a multitude of counsellors, there is safety. They are all saying that the problem's not the fat, the problem is the carbohydrates. So he said to me, I thought, what have I got to lose? So he said, I decided to try it. It sounded a bit extreme, but he said, I, I had nowhere else to go. So he said, I dropped all my carbohydrates. No grain, no grain at all. Majority of these are grain. And he said, I dropped the potatoes. He said, I had a food program that was high in fibre. Where's he getting all his fibre from? Vegetables with the exclusion of the potato. He said, I had a lot of vegetables. He said, I also had quite a substantial amount of protein. Where was he getting his protein from? He was getting his protein from meat, eggs, cheese, butter. He said, I was also having, as you can imagine, quite generous amounts of fat in the butter, in the cheese, in the cream, in the eggs. He said, the weight just fell off me. He said, I got quite excited. He said, I was quite happy with this food program because he said, I was never hungry. You see, there are three food groups that keep the food in the stomach longer. One is fiber. It keeps the food in the stomach longer because all glucose is, glucose is bound up in fiber and fiber slowly releases the glucose. And that's what we want to keep us going between meals. You see, protein keeps the food in the stomach longer because it is in the stomach that protein is broken down. And fat keeps the food in the stomach longer because fat coats the meal and slows down the digestive en enzymes a little, breaking down the food. He said, I was never hungry. The weight just fell off me. He said, I had heaps of energy. You see, if you are not giving this quick energy release carbohydrates to the body, the liver specifically can break down your fat stores to give you glucose, and it has the ability to break down protein and fat to give you glucose if there's nothing else. It's called gluconeogenesis, producing new glucose from the stores. He said, I went back to the doctor six months later. The doctor hardly recognized me. He said, in six months, I had lost almost 50 kilos. Wow. <laughs> he said, the doctor took my blood pressure. Normal. He took my cholesterol. Normal. He took my blood sugar. Normal. Doc said, keep up that low fat diet. It's doing you well. <laughs> Lee said, I decided not to tell him because I wanted to get this to its full I wanted to see it fully through. But doctor did not even mention medication. He was balancing it really well. You see, these three food groups are the essential food groups. Essential because fibre is absolutely necessary for the colon to keep things moving. If things don't move, the body shuts down. It also helps to keep, it does house cleaning in the colon by sweeping out all the grooves. And it is the fiber content or the fiber part of most of your grains where you'll find your B vitamins, essential vitamins. Protein is essential. You see 50% of the membrane around every cell in the body is protein. In our last lecture, we looked at the DNA, we looked at the crossword bands that are made up of amino acids, a breakdown from the protein that you eat. We looked at the new cell being made, made from amino acids, which is the breakdown from the protein that we eat. That's a pretty important part. In fact, you take all the water away, protein is the most abundant substance in the body. 50% of the membrane around every cell in the body is fat. Fat is an essential nutrient. This is true for every membrane, even the membrane around the nucleus, the membrane around the Krebs cycle, all 50% fat. 
except for the brain. The membrane around the brain cell is 70% fat. Whew, that makes it pretty important. Our sex hormones are, ma are a breakdown from the fat. Our, our stress hormones are also a breakdown from fat. That makes fat pretty, pretty important. At a later date, I'm going to look at fats and I'm going to define fats because there are fats that are dangerous and there are fats that are healing. But because there are dangerous fats, sadly, all fats have been lumped into the one basket. But as the nutrition world is starting to see, and as all these authors I just quoted to you, show fat is essential. Your fat-soluble vitamins cannot be accessed unless you're eating them with fat. The non-essential might surprise you. The non-essential food group is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not bad. What a relief. We certainly like these foods. Carbohydrates are not bad. Carbohydrates are not even dangerous. No, no, no. It's only when they are refined and overdone that the danger arises. Because with the refined carbohydrates and the overdone carbohydrates causing the body to store it as fat, this is fat build up on the internal organs. This is fat build up on the, on the inactive parts of the body. Because your carbohydrates are your non-essential and in the catalyst program, fat or fiction, there was a professor there who said, let me make it very, very clear. You can live without it. But as the non-essential, that's your negotiating part of your, of your food. Don't negotiate your fiber, protein and fat. They're essential. It's the carbohydrates that are the negotiating part. And the negotiations change depending on your age, depending on your height, depending on your size, depending on your fitness, depending on your physical, mental output through the day. So the other part where negotiations is a very important part with carbohydrates is health status. Earlier we looked at how cancer cells feed on glucose. It's their favorite food. So if someone wanted to conquer cancer, that would be the first food group they would drastically drop. If someone wanted to lose weight, they would drastically drop. If someone wanted to conquer diabetes, drastically drop. And tomorrow I'm going to show you how this plays out in diabetes. If someone wanted to conquer a yeast presence in their body, drastically drop. And it's not forever. I've seen many people drastically drop it, get a turnaround in their cancer, and then little by little start to implement it again. It's not forever. It's just for a period of time to get a certain result out of the body. Now with Lee, I did mention his protein was from animal sources and his fat from, was from animal sources. And I'm a vegetarian. You can do superior to animal protein and animal fat on a vegetarian diet. How? Let's have a look at this. I'm going to show you vegetarian protein here. So we've got the food, we've got the protein content of the food, and we've got the carbohydrate content of the food. And we're going to go to Genesis 129, where God tells Adam and Eve the best food. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth. What's a herb-bearing seed? That's a grain. And we have so many grains to choose from today. We've got wheat, rye, barley, oats, amrath, buckwheat, millet, quinoa, so many grains. Grains are high in protein and they are quite high in carbohydrate. Let's go to our carbohydrate list and see how many are from the grain department. So we've got grain, 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 grain. So the majority on our carbohydrate list are from the grain department. No wonder they're high carbs. 
Another herb bearing seed is the legume. What's a legume? That's your lentil, chickpeas, lima beans, black eyed beans, cannelloni beans, kidney beans, soy, split peas, so many legumes. Legumes are high in carbohydrate and medium to low in carbohydrate. You will find most low carb advocates put the legume and the grain together, but they are not. The fact is legumes are approximately a third the carbohydrate content that you will find in your grains. Another herb bearing seed is the seed. So that's your pumpkin seed, sesame seed, sunflower seed, chia seed, flax seed or linseed. Seeds are high in protein and they are quite low in carbohydrate. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which of the tree is a fruit bearing seed. What's a fruit bearing seed? That's your nut. So your nut comes from the fruit of a tree. We live on a wonderful part of the planet. We're the only country in the world that can afford to eat macadamia nuts. Beautiful nut. One lady said, aren't they high in fat? I said, that's right. Isn't that good? Fat's an essential nutrient. One lady told me she was on a diet and she's allowed one macadamia nut a day. I said, I have 10 a meal. It's not the fat's not the problem. We've got walnuts, pecan nuts, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, almonds, so many nuts. Nuts are high in protein and quite low in carbohydrate. So my suggestion is with this information to ensure that you're getting your three essentials and to ensure you don't overdo your non-essential, my suggestion is that you increase the legume, nut, seed part of the meal and decrease the grain part of the meal. That is an easy way to help get the balance on a vegetarian diet. And we have seen many people conquer many diseases by going on the low carb diet on a vegetarian diet by mostly decreasing the grains and increasing the legume, nut and seed part of the meal. That's an easy way to do it. And you can do that very effectively on a vegetarian diet. Most vegetarians don't explore the wonderful legume. Most people say, oh, but you have to soak it. I said, that's right, go home and soak saucepanfuls. In the morning, rinse them. Cook them, rinse them again, bag them in little bags in your freezer. Then you've got a whole freezer full. All they're waiting for is a delicious sauce. That's easy. Most people stop the fat because of cholesterol. What I'd like to show you now is the truth about cholesterol. Cholesterol is made by the liver and 80% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from glucose and 20% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from fat. Looking at this equation, if you want to get your cholesterol levels down, what food group would you drop? It's not the fat. <laughs> And this is one thing that Lee found when he was going, was on his high animal protein and fat diet, his cholesterol levels came down. Dr. Atkins showed in the 80s that dietary cholesterol has little or no effect on blood cholesterol levels. And was it about a year ago, Catalyst did a program on cholesterol and it showed very clearly in there, well documented, that cholesterol is not the issue.